this bloodborne curiosity. I'd love to tinker. I like to think. I like to pull things apart to see how they work. I, you know, that's my dad's fault. It's her fault too, because she was insanely creative. So I remember we had this guest bedroom and it had these two single beds and it had these beautiful white bedspreads and you weren't supposed to go in there. It's just like that living room that has plastic on the furniture and you don't go in there. Mm -hmm. But I love to play on these bedspreads because the bedspreads had these channels in it that looked like highways. Mm. And so I'd take my little Hot Wheels car <laughs> and I would literally drive around the world uh -huh. on these bedspreads. And so... I remember I was in there playing on these white bedspreads and I remember I had some radios or something that I was taking apart and I had some stuff plugged in and I'm taking it apart and I got cars all over the bed and something sparked mm. and burned a hole into the bedspread. Whoa. So I burned this hole. I'm like, oh, here comes this lady. And my mother smells something burning. She comes in there and she just absolutely loses. Mm -hmm. When your father gets home, mm -hmm. so my father comes home and she is livid. And, and she says, you need to go in there and talk to that boy. Mm -hmm. So he goes, okay. So he walks in the room and he shuts the door behind him. Um, and he looks at me. He looks left, right. <laughs> He winks at me uh -huh. and he goes, what's going on in here? Right? I'm standing there like, <laughs> and, and then he comes over closer to me and he said, what do you think happened? Mm. What, what, what do you mean? He said, oh, calm down. What do you think was the chemical or electrical reaction that happened to burn the hole in the mattress? Well, I think such and such. He said, why do you think it overheated? What do you think is going on there? We were having, um, wow. <laughs> we were having a science lab. Yes. Right? Uh-huh. So we clean up and I'm sitting there going, well, why did that happen? What, what did I do? What did I cross some wires? Did I do whatever? This is the truth. That year on my birthday, he bought me my first electronic set. Oh, dude. Mm. Man, can I tell you? <laughs> Again, your father, like, there, there was so much wisdom there. So if you look at, like, the, the tech industry and you hear about, like, innovation and MVPs and startings, you know, startups and all of that, you hear the concept or this concept used to float around and it said, move fast and break things. Right. That was the whole concept. Move fast and break things. Meaning if you're breaking things and you're moving fast, you're getting somewhere. You're trying. Right. A lot of uh, but that usually does not flow in the black community or the African-American demographic. We try not to break things. We want to make don't let that fall off the shelf. Don't tear that thing up. It's this scarcity mindset at times. But a lot of it is rooted in history. Right. Your father had the wisdom <laughs> back in the day to tell you to move fast and break things. But there was another thing when, because he was such, you know, a, a big proponent of learning. When he saw you having an interest in something, he poured gasoline on that fire and allowed it to burn. Fellas, pay attention to that. Again, I'm not saying to tell your kids to go and just start breaking stuff because then your wife gonna put you on the couch perpetually. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not advocating that because the couch is, you know, I'm hitting 40. So the couch is not good too often throughout the, you know, we'll talk later about that. But when you notice things and you see that there's some level of interest in something, as opposed to punishing, sometimes take a step back and see if there's an opportunity because how many world-renowned chemists started from burning stuff up? How many world-renowned chefs started from burning dinners and whatever? How many engineers started from breaking every radio in the house You know that you now hear about? How many of these startup guys who have multi-billion dollar organizations had failures before or their parents allowed them to screw up and fail a little bit like failure is not always fatal is sometimes it's just a learning opportunity but if you see that there's this twinkling of a itch or whatnot that your kids have 
pour a little bit of gasoline on it and see where it goes. That, coming from that air, I'm trying to tell you, dude, like it's so fascinating. An African American man who was born in 1923 had the wherewithal when you were a kid, and I'm not gonna tell your age, but I guess it was a little older than I am, but had the wherewithal a few decades ago to think that way.